Jessica DeMassa here at the Heise Studio at HIC 2017, and I'm with Martin. Martin, please introduce yourself for everybody. Hi, uh, my name is Martin Senevaratna. I'm a junior doctor from Sydney, currently based over in the US at Stanford doing a digital health fellowship. Okay, so tell me a little bit about this digital health fellowship and what you're learning about the US digital health community versus what's going on here in Australia. Yeah, I mean, there's, especially in the Bay Area, so much excitement around digital health. Um, doesn't mean they have everything right, and actually, at a systems level, the Australian healthcare system and how we're doing informatics is world class. But where I think the US does really well is in A, this like really buzzing innovation community okay. around digital health, and B, the fact that, that hospitals and health systems are starting to realize the power in their data. Okay, let's talk about A first. Yeah. So let's talk about that robust community of digital health. How is it different in the States than it is in Australia? What's missing here? Yeah, so it's, I mean, I think the really, the magic thing about, especially the Silicon Valley area is that everyone wants to be an entrepreneur. Now, it's not always a good thing because some of the ideas, you know, are, are just not, not great not, ideas. Not, shouldn't, shouldn't be explored that much. Um, and it can be difficult to separate hot air from, from reality sometimes. Sure. But, you know, the, the silver lining to all that is that there is this creative energy and, and people you know, we'll start a startup and knock on doors and try and get their digital health solution up and running. Um, what do we need to make that happen in Australia? I think, A, we need better sandboxes where people can actually test their ideas in a safe environment. Because one of the real challenges with any digital health tool is that, you know, there's, there's no way to test it. There's no way to easily get evidence without potentially putting patients at risk. Right. Um, particularly with solutions that aren't fully developed yet. So how do we create those safe sandbox test environments to do it, A? And B, I mean, I think a startup community or innovation community really needs, a, a, it, it's a jigsaw puzzle and you need a number of pieces to be in place. So you need funders, investors who are willing to invest in digital health. You need government or health systems who are willing to, you know, potentially take a risk and, um, and work with some of the smaller companies out sure. there who are more innovative. Um, and you need a, a data infrastructure that makes it possible for these newer technologies to um, integrate with the existing systems. Okay, and tell me a little bit, you had mentioned too that there's a different kind of organizational support in the US versus Australia, right? So tell me some of the differences that you're seeing there. Well, in, in terms of innovators, do you mean? Or, or even like the hospital systems or government support. It, what are the differences that you're seeing there? Mm. So the U.S., I guess, is a land of fiefdoms. <laughs> and that, you know, these hospital systems, some of them have become extremely innovative. You take Kaiser as an example. UCSF has, has been particularly good. And they've, what, they've, what they've been able to do is actually create a, a data layer where data is shared across their health system, both primary care and into acute care. And they've um, made that, they're, they're leveraging that data to improve their care, okay. right? Um, however, where the US falls down is that there, there isn't that national architecture right. to be able to share data and, and innovate at a systems level. So even though Kaiser may be doing some amazing things, that doesn't always translate to benefits at a systems level. And, and I think that's where Australia can really you know, blow the US out of the water. To well, be talk honest. more about that, because you started out, and this is going to be our final question, but talk more about that, because you started out saying that there's a lot of great things that Australia is doing that are different. So tell me about that. Where can, where can Australia really make a difference in terms of the way healthcare is delivered and the patient experience is enjoyed? Yeah, I mean, we're starting in a good position. Australia's healthcare system already today is amongst the best in the world mm -hmm. and certainly better than the, the United States on most, you know, standard quality metrics for healthcare. Um, so we're starting from a good position, but from an informatics perspective, where we're particularly, you know, what I'm really excited about is what um, the My Health Record stands to do and what the work that Australian Digital Health Agency stands to do. Because here is a way where we as a nation can move towards a digital health system. Um, and the kind of, the possibilities that that opens up are really vast. This is, 
no, you know, whenever I tell my um, American colleagues about what Australia at a federal level is planning to do, they are gobsmacked that no, we've been able exciting. to achieve this politically. And so it, it is exciting. Um, we have to make sure that privacy is managed well and that everyone's on board as we make this transition. But like, we're doing something here that very few countries around the world have been able to do and that the US cannot foreseeably do. Fantastic. Well, Martin, thank you so much for sharing your perspective. It's interesting to hear what you're taking away from the U.S. And, and your perspective on what's happening here in Australia and how the two are different. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. My pleasure. It, it is exciting what's happening here in Australia, and I'm very pleased to hear your perspective. Agreed. The Thanks. perfect land. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us here in the studio. I'm Jessica DeMassa at Hick 2017. Thank you.